Hey, people, it's Lars Blob here, and welcome to episode 19 of Felix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. Last time, we started the first day of this episode's trial sections, and na and we were cross-examining Gumshoe, and we also cross-examined Trillo, and now we're going to basically get Trillo to spill about how we have the what, the engagement ring, how he doesn't have it. What is it? What are you talking about? Uh-oh, looks like they're going to double-team me now. Do you recognize this ring? Ah, that's... that's... That's mine! Give it back! Thief! Thief! Didn't you just testify about this very object? I believe you said, in the end, I was able to give it to her. So I still got it in my pocket. Why then do I have it right here? Ah! What's going on here? That's that's. Then say something! Uh, don't put me on the spot like that, Trillo. I found this in Money's room. Ah, my nose. I have, I have some... You kiss such a... <sighs> money's room? You mean a room that they put money like in like a bank vault? Ha! Ah, that filthy monkey's gonna get what's coming to him! Mr. Quist, I would prefer if you avoid slandering innocent fiats in my court. Well, your honor, money really is a monkey, in every sense of the word. Oh, I see. Well then. Money likes to go after the shiniest things that he can find and gouge them up. Shiny things? Trillo! When was this ring stolen from you? Well, like, it was that time, you know, that night, the day of the crime. What did you just say? Details! I need more details! Well, it was stolen right after Max showed up in the plaza. Right about when you saw the defendant walk. Right about when you saw the defendant walk by, correct? Well, um, I guess you might not be able to save that. The ring might have. Um, well, it could have been taken around that time. Oh! Oh, yo! Oh! Ben, what's with you? Oh, whatever, just blow my sack, you asshole! It has nothing to do with anything, especially now who committed this murder. It's not for you to decide what to do with what. Now, Trillo, back to the topic at hand. I didn't admit anything, not I, Mr. Trillo Quist. What did you do when the ring was taken, Trillo? You know exactly what I did! I chased after that, that ring snatching monkey money! But you weren't able to catch up with him, were you? It's all slow, loafy fool, Ben called. Uh, uh, all this slow, loafy fool called Ben's on. It's a hard swap! You're just as bad as Ben, you moron! Suck my sack! While he was fumbling his way through the snow, that dumb monkey was able to get away! That is indeed an incredible shame. Well, this does indeed prove one very important point. Prove an important point? What point could that possibly be? Ben doesn't exercise enough! I will say this! Obviously that one Mr. Benjamin Woman is lacking in the area of exercise! This is clear from the testimony we have just listened to! He was too slow to, and awkward to catch a monkey fleeing through the snow! This revelation doesn't seem to be re registering too well around the courtroom. Maybe you need the courtroom drama for that video game! For video games and rethink that one! Um, okay! I had to do it! Ben says only is a flaw! There's a huge contradiction in this witness's testimony! Contradiction? The witness just testified to the following effect. Up until the police arrived, he didn't move from the entrance to the plaza. However, the witness just stated that he chased after Money the Monkey. When the witness was off chasing money, there was no one watching the plaza. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Where are you going with this little theory of yours? I'm saying that there is no possible way that this witness saw the plaza the entire time. That's where I'm going with this little theory, which leads me to my next point. It is entirely possible that someone other than the defendant was at the scene. Interesting. Well, then tell me this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Do you have any proof that this vi that something slipped past this vigilant ventriloquist? Well, he obviously didn't see the victim, the ringmaster, arrive on the scene. However, that doesn't change the fact that he saw the defendant arrive. With the witness is lying. He is blinded by his rivalry with Max. Well, the defense's argument does hold water. This witness does have a history of animosity towards the defendant. What? How dare you blow my sack? I would not want to get the dork face in trouble! He's not even worth it! He's not even worth the blow my sack! 
I saw him, no doubt about it! I saw that worthless liar! Well, just for clarity's sake, let's flesh out exactly who you saw that night. Ha! Huh? I told you so many times that you think that you know my story's not changing! You've already changed your story, sick boy, and I'm sure it will change them more. Well, there is one night, there are usually many more behind it! Exactly, Maya. That's why we have to keep after him. Yeah! I'll give you what I was waiting for that night. I'll give you that I was waiting that night for Regina. But that doesn't change the fact I saw Max in the plaza that night. He showed up after I had been waiting there for about five minutes. I said good evening to him, but he didn't even acknowledge my presence. I actually chose him. I saw Max accidentally galactic on the scene. There's no way I could mistake anyone wearing those three symbols. Okay, this is the testimony. Where basically Troll saying good evening to him, but they had bad relations that morning. So that means that money didn't show up until after you saw Max. That's right, money ran up less than a minute after you saw Max. The money snatched, then money snatched the ring, and you went chasing after him. How long was it until you came back to where you were waiting? Well, let's see. I'd say about, uh, I suppose, five minutes, I think. So the victim could have arrived on the scene in that five-minute stretch. Mr. Wright, please proceed with your cross-examination. Witnessing Max. Okay. Troll is so angry about that good evening. He has passion. So you testified that you said good evening to Max that night. You must enjoy asking incredibly obvious questions. You say good morning in the morning and good afternoon during the day, right? And it's obvious that I'd say good night to someone at night. What, Ben, you got something to add? Let me guess, that's not it, Trillo. You say good evening at night. Uh, I'm sorry, Trillo. Mr. West, I would prefer if you kept your ventriloquist act outside the courtroom. Impossible! Remember lives and breathes performances! You should know better! There's gotta be something wrong with that bad testimony. Trillo's evening greeting! Ben's half of the comedy act! Oh! Oh, right! It was the- it was the wording! Yeah, you might be telling around to that. Could do with the girls together. Yeah, it is that. I'm sorry, I was awful. Okay, just fast forward through that loop. Yes, it is Trillo's evening greeting. Isn't that a bit strange to you? What do you mean? Well, if you have eaten Max so much, why would you bother being nice to him? It strikes me as somewhat strange. Why would it strike you as strange? Exactly! How is it strange to be cordial to one of your co-workers? Well, if it was simply just being cordial to a co-worker, I would understand. Ow! That hurts! Maybe you should think of having some proof before your flips sla start flapping next time. Proof is everything in this world. You should have learned that back in grade school. There's no reason that Trilla would have ever said anything nice to Max. How do I go about proving that with evidence? Bluffing is everything in this world, but I'm sure you already learned that one. I guess I can give it a shot. The witness will resume his testimony. Objection. Yeah, you gotta present the bottle. Trillo, is it not true that you had a fight with Max on the day of the murder? A fight? A fight over Regina, be exact. It wasn't that big a deal. It was just an argument, a disagreement at most. A disagreement usually doesn't end with someone getting clonked over the head. That's only after a seven year grudge. That morning, Ben got clobbered over the head by Max, didn't he? Wh what? Is that an admission of assault and battery? Oh! Before we handle this, we should wrap up the defendant's murder charge first. The truth is that on the day of the crime, the defendant and the witness had a huge fight. There's absolutely no way they would have suddenly became cordial that evening. Moreover, just consider the personality of the witness on stand. There's no way a puppet this lewd would just go up to it and say good evening to his rival. Ah! He would have said, suck my- I would have said, blow my sack! Are you saying this witness is lying? That he is trying to frame the defendant by claiming to have seen him at the crime scene? I- I did tell him a lie! Honestly, I just- That's enough from you, Mr. Quist. Mr. Wright? Yes, your honor. Let's clarify this testimony for the court. Could you explain your theory about who the witness actually saw that night? He saw a different person. He saw the victim. 
It is my belief that the witness didn't indeed see someone that night. It was just someone else. And that who he's, that's who he said good evening to. What kind of theory is that? The correct one. Furthermore, I don't believe the person the witness saw was Max at all. Wh what? If he had truly met Max that night, there would have been no agreeing at all, which means there is only one proper answer. The person that the witness saw that night was not Max in Galactica. That is why Chilo made the effort to greet whoever it was that he saw coming that evening. Or good evening, as he put it. Ah! Uh, what in the world, you? Would the events kindly explain who Trillo saw that evening, then? Easy! Considering the ill temper of the witness, there's only one person who he would greet. It must be Regina! It's Regina, right? She's so cute! No, your honor, it's not Regina. It was Re If it was Regina, Trillo would have given her the engagement ring as a present. Oh, yeah, I suppose you got a point there. It was Russell Berry, the victim himself, was it not? You are correct, it was indeed Russell Berry. The person you saw that evening was the victim, the ringmaster, Russell Berry. That's why you greet him, Trillo, isn't that correct? Answer the question, Mr. Quist. Ah! Ah! Order, order! How do you respond to this? What? Wait a second! Well, at first I thought it was the old man. But, but, once I got a better look at him, it was obviously Maximilian Galactica. I think it's high time that we clear the air about this question. Squist obviously witnessed a single person in the area of the plaza that evening. The problem is identifying exactly who that person was. Was it Maximilian Galactica? Or was it the ringmaster, one Ru Mr. Russell Berry? The prosecution argues that it was the defendant that the witness saw that night. The witness has clearly stated that he saw the defendant's three symbols. The three symbols? Alright, this is getting old. Come on, man, you gotta remember them by now. Here we go again, everyone all together now. Ah! Yes, yes, we know. The silk hat, cloak, and white roses. A silk hat and a cloak? Anyone could wear them. They didn't even look good on me. That is highly debatable, Phoenix Wright. But then again, that fool with the foolishness of that outfit would suit you very well. What was that? Well, the witness has endlessly repeated that he saw Max's three symbols. However, how do we know it was Max Million Galactica? It could have been someone else dressed up as him. Possibly even Russell Berry. What? Miss Von Carmel, do you have clear evidence that the person the witness saw was the defendant? Well, I... If that's the case, then it is impossible for me to make a judgment at this point. Yes, I think we finally won a point in this one. That is very unfortunate. Huh? You are just a little too excited for your own good, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What do you mean by that? You merely established one thing from this witness. You established that his wit that he this witness saw one person in the plaza that night. I applaud you on your effort, but what? Who was that? Who that person was can only be answered by the next witness. Huh? Your Honor, the prosecution will provide, beyond a shadow of a doubt, an answer to that question, and evidence that clearly establishes one thing, that there is no one other than Maximilian Galactica responsible for the crime. Very well. The court will take a ten minute recess. During that time, I request the prosecution prepare their next witness. The court is now in recess. To be continued. No, I'm not saving the game. Yes, 11.54 a.m. District Court. S sweetie you have to believe me. I didn't go anywhere near that crime scene. So that's where you were when your mother took me. We talked about it yesterday, remember? I was in the ringmaster's room. And while you were there, it was the ringmaster who left the room, right? Exactly! He told me to wait in the room because he would be right back. That's when the ringmaster had to see the crime, right? That's what it seems like. But the ringmaster must have been wearing Max's costume, right? Oh, sweetie, I just remembered. I went straight to the ringmaster's room, still dressed in my stage clothes. But when I got there, I went ahead and took the costume off. Which means? It means the ringmaster could have taken the costume and went out looking like Max. Fabulous! 
That's a fabulously possible possibility! <laughs> well done, Nick! However, sweetie, why would the ringmaster want to dress up like me? Isn't that a bit strange? Hmm. If you think about it, all they found at the crime scene was my silk hat! What about my cloak? Where did that go? Double, hmm. Wow, Max, I never thought of that! You should be a detective or something! Well, I was never quite sure of what to be when I grew up, magician or president. You have no idea how hard it was to make a decision. That's really cool. Ah, fabulous. This mystery just keeps getting deeper. December 29th, 12.06 p.m. District Court courtroom number two. Now that everyone is back, let's get started. The court is now back in session. Ms. Montgomery, please proceed with the prosecution's case. Very well, I will now call my next witness, a pitiful clown with the unfortunate distinction of having seen the entire thing. Will Mr. Lawrence Curls please take the stand? Why did she just call him a pitiful clown? He is not worthy of the title of foolish. The witness will state his name and occupation for the court record. In West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground! On the playground where I... Name and occupation. Will the witness please inform the court why you're speaking autogra autobiographical gibberish? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just not used to being in court. I've never been in a courtroom my entire life. It was I wasn't quite sure what joke was best suited for this sort of situation. What in the world are you talking about? You're in a grand hall of justice, not some comedy club. Technically, with the, all the stuff that happens here, it could pass off as a comedy club. Since it's easy to see your occupation, please state your name for the court. Oh yeah, maybe this joke is okay. Mom, do I have to wear pants? The sign always says no shirt, no shoes, no service. <laughs> okay, okay, how about this? Have you met my, my proctologist, Mr. Seymour Butts? How was that one? <laughs> well, come on, come on, they want to do a good time making trouble with my... Your name! Lawrence Curls, professional funny man, also known as Mo the Clown. Yes, Larry Mo Larry Mo Curly, the Three Stooges. That's the part of his name. You witnessed the scene at around 10:15 the day of the murder. Correct? Yes, it, yes it is. Very well, Mr. Curls. Will you please testify what you saw that evening? A rabbi, a priest, and a Rastafari walk into this plaza without the humor, please. Okay. Ah, oh, poor Mo can't be in his normal Stooge Seven court. Thank God. I know, I know, I'm not the greatest comedian in the world. I haven't been able to make people laugh for 10 years. No matter what I say, all I get is is a vacant stare and polite applause. Since no one ever laughs at my jokes, I've taken to laughing at them myself. It's a bad habit, but hey, at least I'm trying. Imagine my predicament. I'm a clown who can't make people laugh. I'm almost useless. But I keep trying. I even get up with jokes for us for the day. But this atmosphere is very nerve-wracking. I decided to try and get everyone laugh. Seriously, everyone. What do you think of me? How am I doing? Um, aren't we the ones supposed to be asking the questions here? Witness? Huh? We will listen to your call for help after the court proceedings are over. Thus, please stick with the facts of this case. Really? You'll hear me out? Well, I'll make sure that one of my staff will be your straight man later. Thank you, thank you! I can't wait! Poor Gumshoe. Poor Gumshoe, exactly! Yes, Phoenix! Gumshoe's gonna be forced to listen to this. Help me, Mr. Hedgeworth! Save me from this clown! Now that this is over, we shall be shall we begin once again with the testimony? Of course we can! I'll talk for as long as you want! I have a hostage now! The night of the murder! After practice with her, I went straight back to my room. You have no idea how tired I was that night. I was pooped. I thought I'd go straight to sleep, but before I did, I glanced at the window. That's when I saw two sil silhouettes. They were a bit far away though. It was the ringmaster and he was with Max, who was wearing his cloak. I get watching them, and all of a sudden, Max conked the ringmaster over the head. That's very interesting. If this eyewitness is a kind to believe, I have enough to pass judgment right now. Of course you can. There is no way you, that this t account can be criticized. However, the witness is a bit, how do you say, off kilter. Almost like he has some sort of atmosphere of guilt surrounding him. 
That must be because of my insincere smile. Mr. Wright, please begin the defense which causes the abomination. Yes, your honor. Yeah, you got my some kind of contradiction testimony. I know that. Mr. Wright, your honor. I'm afraid that if you push this way too far, it would be it would bring disaster upon the court. Thus, I sincerely hope you are not going to engage in pointless saber rattling. I understand, your honor. If you cause this client to stray away from the facts, I'll hold you responsible. Why am I responsible? I'm not the one with the corny jokes! Yeah, I noticed. You just got to pinpoint what changed. You can do it, Nick! <sighs> you say the practice wrapped up around 10 p.m., right? See, that's the thing! Huh? How exactly am I supposed to make a joke about 10 p.m.? How is 8 o'clock? That's something a clown can run for on. That's just a pretend it was 8 o'clock. I can make a grand old joke. Let's not! Let's not make 8 p.m., alright, Mo? What do you mean it's not? Don't take the cloud out of the cloud around! Come on, Nick, this is your joke! There are three reasons why I don't want to. One, I probably won't laugh. Two, I'll get hit with a penalty. Three, I'll get whipped. Will the witness just proceed with the factual testimony? You are so boring! <sighs> you were pooped that night. Yes, I was very, very tired. Not to mention it's a bad Mexican food. What? The double cheese double! Bean enchilada is a dangerous menu item. What happened to that, as they say, happens! Oh! <laughs> that was so cool. Uh, I hear the kids really love toilet humor these days. That joke was so hip, I don't want to ru ruin it with a reply. I've got a good reply, though! That joke was fun, buddy, and earned you a penalty! It's as if the game was saying, You know what? You brought that pawn yourself! You heard Mo with poop! You just happened to glance out the window? You could say that! You could also say that I peeked, styled, glimpsed, peeped, eyeballed! Mr. Curls! Oh, I guess synonyms aren't allowed either! What should I do? I wonder if I should press him further on this issue. Keep pressing! Exactly why did you look out your window that night? Why? Why? Clowns don't need a reason to look out their windows, do they? That's not what I meant. I meant that, well, when we spoke yesterday. Once I had tucked myself into bed, I heard this amazing noise. It was incredibly loud. It sounded like a giant thump. Oh yeah! I always forgot about that! You forgot? Your Honor, the witness looked out his window upon hearing a loud sound. He did not just simply glance out his window that night. Oh yeah, that's right! I forgot to mention that thump, didn't I? Oh yeah, oh! That's not something you for just forget to mention! Um, yeah, what she said. I believe it would be best if Mo were to revise his testimony. Very well, Mr. Curls, please revise your testimony. This should start turning the tables in our favor. What was the sound like? Well, I guess it was kind of sound like, hmm, I guess you could say, Mr. Curls, did the court remind you that humor is unnecessary? No! How did you know I was going to make a joke? <laughs> I guess that sound was like a, I always sound like a, someone getting hit with something very hard. Yep, that's what it sounded like, honest. Someone getting hit, huh? What then? Where you ate, you went, and what you saw? Like I said, sometimes I'm not clear. Yes, yes, the judge criticizes Phoenix. I made a mistake, I know, I'm horrible. I am a horrible human being who made a mistake. Do -do -do. 
Far away, you say? If you had to say exactly, how far away were they? Let me think about that for a second. If my room is here, and they looked about yay big, I'd say they were about 30 feet from my window. Just 30 feet? That's not far at all. It was snowing that night, and it cut down visibility. I see. Please see you with your testimony regarding the two shadows that you saw. Say you clearly saw this, even though you were, by your own admission, far away. That's right, I had been thinking about it over and over since that night. But things didn't really make sense until I spoke with the prosecutor, Miss Von Karma. But now I'm 100% certain that it was Max and the Ringmaster that I saw that night. Just think about it, how could I be wrong if Max always wearing his uppity symbols? Uppity symbols? Law lawyers nowadays, do you even have to go to school anymore to be one? Alright everyone, know what to do, I'll get it now, start with Uncle Mo. You all suck. See what I mean? It's always like this. The crowd never wants to go along with me. I must be utterly and completely worthless as a clown. Yowza! Enough foolishness. Get back on track. Just please testify just to what you saw. And only what you saw. You say you saw the ringmaster get clonked over the head. Yes, I did. It's the climax of my story. He really does enjoy the completely random, non sequitur. What would you say the victim was struck with? You mean weapon? I have no idea. A weapon was in fact the murder scene, right? No, no, no! You did say you saw the entire thing, didn't you? Well, I, um... Yeah, I suppose I did. Wait, no I didn't! I didn't see a weapon! <laughs> Mo! Did you or did you not see the crime of the mur a murder committed that night? I will not permit you to harass my witness in this matter! You'd better have an excellent reason for attacking this poor, poor clown! Because if you don't... You know what is waiting for you. A nice penalty. Wasn't that a bit melodynamic? So what will be that, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Do you have any clear advice? Of course I do. I've got a great reason to make my claim. And I suppose you will be telling us all that great reason? Of course I will. The reason is... The witness's very own testimony! What is the meaning of this, Mr. White? Mo said that he heard a sound like a thump on s of someone getting hit. He did say that. However, Mo just stated the following under oath. I kept watching them, and all of a sudden, Max clonked the wingmaster over the head! If Mo is to believe when he said that he was looking- that he looked at the, at, at the window upon hearing a sound, there is no way he could see Max clonk anyone! In 1972, a crack clown unit! The A-Team reference! Mr. Gross, how do you restore to destroy the system? They didn't commit. These clowns from probably escaped from a maximum security clown car. Mr. Curls, are you reciting the C team theme to anger this court? No, no, no. I'm just sorry for time while I jog my memory. Good job, Nick! These types of witnesses always seem to have a selective memory. You just have to peel back the layers of the clown makeup to find the truth. Clowns are like onions, you see. Well, um. Oh, uh, you're back from your jog? Well, it pretty much happened the way I said. Pretty much. When I looked out my window that night, the ringmaster was already face down in the snow. The prosecution helped me fill in the gaps of my statement. Mon- Mon- Karma! Tampering with the witnesses again! You're surprised, Phoenix! You're honestly surprised! So now you're saying that you did not see the defendant clock the ringmaster. Y yes. When I looked out my window, the ringmaster had already checked out. Oh. Yep, he was on permanent vacation, as they say. <laughs> Mr. Curls! Your Honor. You did not witness the actual crime. However, you still say you saw the criminal, correct? Y yes! Exactly! The ringmaster was slumped over, and I saw someone's silhouette next to him. Very well, then. Please testify this still as you saw. I expect to see the truth. And if I even get a hint of a joke from you, I will put you in a holding cell until you learn court etiquette. Got it? God. <laughs> I can still kick your ass, Judge. I'll kick your ass! I'll beat the crap at you! I'll beat you silly! I'll beat you all laughing. Literally, I can just imagine Mo just beating the crap out of someone with that laugh. I was a bit far away, but the shadow could only have belonged to Max. 
There's no doubting it, especially since I saw his uppity symbols. His silk hat, that black cloak, they were all there. His face was still away, but there was no doubt that it was him. His cloak was fluttering in the wind, so I couldn't really see what he was carrying. It does seem as if the defendant was at the scene of the crime. You took your time realizing that, didn't you? Whatever, that should be enough, right? It is decisive testimony. Was not really at the crime scene that night? He said he wasn't there. We have to keep believing that. Alright, Mr. Wright, commence your cross-examination. Which we shall do in the next episode. I really appreciate that you stick around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer, and I'll be coming back for the next one. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever you want. And with that, I'll see you later. Bye.